Hey y'all, welcome to my week 50 post VSG update. How are you? I hope everybody's doing really well. I feel great. I feel re-inspired. I feel reinvigorated, even though I had a game this week. <laughs> I think it kind of lit a fire under my butt. I uh, I had vertical sleeve gastrectomy on October 20th, 2016 in Morristown, New Jersey at Morristown Medical Center. Even though I'm from New Orleans, I feel like everybody knows that, but maybe you don't. Um, my high weight starting weight day of surgery was 265. I'm 5 foot 8. I'm now 31 years old. Last week I came to you at 170 even. This week I come to you at 171.6. So that is a 1.6 pound gain for the week, but 93.4 pounds down since surgery. So I'm really not stressed about this gain. I feel like it's pretty small. Um, I try, try so hard to keep in mind like normal people. <laughs> And by normal, I only mean people who haven't really struggled with their weight throughout their lives. I know we can't really define normal, but you know what I mean. I feel like normal people don't really stress about small gains like that, especially if they know why. <laughs> and I know why I gained this week um, and what to do to fix it. So it's not like I, I've done everything perfect this week and I still gained because that wouldn't make sense. Um, so anyway, I'm not, uh, I'm not stressed about it. Why did I have a gain this week? So I uh, definitely had multiple cheat meals. <laughs> I went to visit Anna from Anna VSG. Actually, wait, she recently changed her channel name to essentially Anna. Um, I went to visit her in Pittsburgh last weekend. Um, I live in New Jersey and she lives in Pittsburgh. It's not that far, so um, I drove over there. I met her at WLSFA earlier this year and we really hit it off and just from watching her videos on her channel I knew we'd be friends I think we're a lot alike in a lot of ways her uh, family is from Portugal and she moved to the US when she was young and uh, keeps um, both cultures alive in her heart and in her family and um, I've always felt a kinship with people who uh, who kind of have that dual uh, dual nationality in a in a cultural sense. My best friend growing up was a, a girl who whose family was Greek, and she would travel to Greece all the time. Anyway, I'm Mexican. I travel to Mexico all the time. My family all lives there, um, so I always feel a kind of kinship with people who who live like that. Um, also, we, we kind of work in the same line of work, and uh, I, I can tell she's super smart. I always like this about her videos, is that um, when, when she does something, she like researches it fully, she reads up on it, she like reads studies, she reads papers, she reads journals, like she really does her homework before uh, deciding to do something, and I love that about her. Anyway, uh, I went to visit her over the weekend, and it was, uh, it was great. It was just really relaxing, and just, it's always good to spend time with friends, <laughs> obviously. But I drove there and it was like a five hour drive and I packed a whole bunch of really, uh, you know, good snacks to, for the car ride. <laughs> uh, nuts, jerky, uh, you know, protein bars and whatever. And then I ate them all on the way there. <laughs> I had packed them all so I wouldn't like stop for junk food. Well, I ate them all. It was supposed to be, you know, for there and back. I ate them all on the way there, uh, which was too much. And then on the way back, I didn't have any snacks. So then I stopped for junk food. And uh, it really felt me, made me feel kind of gross. Honestly, I, it's weird how we have these like mental associations. Like you're on a road trip. I don't know. I, I feel like my former life and my younger years, whatever, whenever you're on a road trip, you like stop to gas up, you get like a big bag of chips, you get all this candy, like that's just what you do. It's stuff that I never, ever, ever eat. So on the drive home, I, uh, I stopped for gas, picked up a bag of Doritos and some white chocolate Reese's and uh, two soft tacos from Taco Bell. Ugh, guys, I ate it all and it made me feel so sick, like terrible, ugh, ugh. Anyway, while I was in Pittsburgh, I had a fabulous time. Anna took me to this uh, really great restaurant that had wonderful burgers. I had a elk burger with Gruyere and bacon jam and arugula. Oh my gosh, it was excellent. Um, and I think the good thing about uh, vacationing with or eating out with other people who have had weight loss surgery or, or who are on similar eating plans as you is that hopefully they won't tempt you with food that you can't have. <laughs> 
because they can't have it either. So, you know, it's not like she took me to, like, a milkshake shop or anything. She uh, absolutely did her part of Fabulous Host. I did not do my part <laughs> because I ate all that crap on the way home. Um, and I got home and I just, I, I felt so sick. Anyway, so here's, here's after that, not in, like, a sense of um, punishing myself, but in a sense of fully, once again, realizing how sensitive I am or have become to carby foods, I decided to go lower carb than I normally do. So I think my regular routine has me, had me in the neighborhood of, I don't know, 60 to 80 grams of carbs per day. And you know what kind of got me thinking about this was uh, the kids from Keto Connect, Matt and Mega, uh, they recently did maybe a week or two uh, challenge or whatever of like super low carb where they really didn't even eat like vegetables. It was just like meat, eggs, and cheese. And uh, they were in the neighborhood of like, I don't know, 10 carbs a day or less. And I watched their videos. They did, I think, five videos. Like they showed what they ate every day. I watched their videos and I was like, that's not so different from what I eat. That's what I, that's what I eat. How am I getting so many carbs? And I realized it really kind of boils down to protein bars and like yogurts um, and granolas and stuff in the afternoons, which kind of seems like a no-brainer. I feel like everybody I've watched on YouTube who is months ahead of me has come to the realization of like needing to cut out protein bars from their life. Well, I am there, you guys. I am at that point. Uh, because, so I got back on Sunday, so now it's Thursday, so it's been four full days where I've tried to go super low carb. And I'm not going to use the word keto because I'm still kind of afraid of it. But w instead of being like 60 to 75 grams of carbs, this these last four days have been like 20 to 35. And you'd be surprised at how big of a difference that makes. Oh, and that, oh, that's what I was going to say. That's, that's what kind of uh, resonated with me that Matt and Mega mentioned in their videos. They normally do, I think, like 25 grams of carbs a day. And when they went on that, that week test or whatever... They got down to like 10, right? And so Matt at the end was like, you'd be surprised at how going from 20 to 10 grams of carbs a day makes a big difference. And I was like, I can go from 60 to 30. And so this week I've done that mainly by not having my morning protein bar and not having afternoon yogurt. And then it's not so bad because I just have my like protein coffee in the morning and then for lunch, some kind of seafood, cheese, eggs, avocado, afternoon, similar kind of snack, nuts, that sort of thing. And then dinner, I usually have a lot of seafood, again, or bacon, or, you know, whatever, turkey. I had, today I had a turkey burger. Um, so really just cutting out sweets, even if they were, like, good sweets, has really helped. But what I realize is that I'm craving sweets, and I don't think it's just because I've suddenly cut them out, but because I think our palates need balance in life. We can't just like eat salty, savory things forever, and I'm really not even a sweets person. So um, I'm going to get back on like baking good... I hate saying keto because it scares me so bad, but, <laughs> but baking good, like, low-carb uh, snacks. Because, like, a, a granola, a, a protein bar will have, I don't know, maybe 20 grams of carbs. And it might have, I don't know, 7 or 8 grams of, pro of fiber, so you do the net carb thing or whatever. But, for instance, um, goodies, blondies only have one net carb per blondie and they're so freaking good so I just ordered more mix and I'm gonna be experimenting there are lots of different recipes that people do different things with her baking mix like they don't follow the instructions on the package they like just use it I guess kind of like a flour to bake other things maybe so I saw this recipe for these um like lemon cheesecake blondies white chocolate something I don't know if I make them maybe I'll, I'll film it and show you guys but I feel like I can get my sweet fix without a protein bar. That's what I'm getting at. And that's what I'm going to try. So I feel like I'm kind of slowly tiptoeing into very low carb territory. And, um, you know, the word keto has always really scared me because in my mind, I associate keto with low carb plus high fat. And, um, the high fat thing just really scares me. And I know there's a lot of studies and research on on why that's not a bad thing the way we used to think it was in like the 90s or whatever, 80s. I grew up very much in a 
Weight Watchers household where every single product in our house was sugar-free and fat-free. Everything. And it's really hard to break out of that mentality. You know, if I'm going to buy a cream cheese, I could get the regular one or the low-fat one or the fat-free one. In my mind, I'm still like, well, they taste the same. Just get the fat-free one. It's less in calories and it's less in fat. And, you know, my dad had um, heart uh trouble. He had open heart surgery twice. And so I always think about cholesterol and, and fat in my arteries. And first of all, I think that's much, much more risky if you're severely obese the way I was. I think now that I'm very close to a healthy weight, that's not so much of a concern, but then people can have high cholesterol too, but my cholesterol is totally fine. And um, I don't think that keto diets, when done in a healthy way, really increase cholesterol. I can't talk you through the science of the way the hormones interact and all this, or the chemistry of it, or whatever. But there are endless, of course, endless um, scientific studies written on the health benefits of keto. So, oh, but what I was going to say is, often or I guess maybe the main reason people add fat to their keto diet is because fat is very satiating. But as weight loss surgery patients, we get full really quickly anyway, so I don't think we really need to add a whole lot of extra fat to get that same effect. (laughs) Um, So that's why I'm not calling it keto. I'm just sticking with the idea of like very low carb, and I'm not adding extra fat to make myself feel full because I already feel full because I have a sleeve. (laughs) So um, I'm not calling it keto, but I am like officially trying to go very low carb. And very low carb for me, I'm defining as, I don't know, like 20 to 30 grams of carbs a day. And I'm going to stick with that for um, the foreseeable future because I just, I feel better. And it's not that hard. (laughs) It's not that different from what I was doing before. I was so close to that before. And um, I feel less bloated. I feel more satiated. I feel more energetic. Like I don't really get that afternoon slump, you know? Um, And so I don't think it's hard to stay committed to that sort of thing because I know that it makes me feel good. Like, why would I choose to do something that kind of makes me feel sick? (laughs) Oh yeah, because I have this like crazy mental disassociation with that. But I just, I, I, I like try to actively say the words out loud. No, that kind of makes me feel sick when somebody says like, Oh, there's cookies in the break room. You want some? I say, no, those kind of make me feel sick. And just like reminding myself of that has been really helpful because at the end of the day, I know I'm right. I know if I eat a bunch of junk food, I feel terrible. I proved this to myself on Sunday when I was driving home, I felt so gross. So anyway, that is my like official announcement. I'm not officially going keto, but I am officially going very low carb for um, as long as I can hold out. And, you know, it's only two weeks until my one year surge anniversary. And uh, I've been trying to do a what I eat in a day like every three months or so. So probably soon after my official one year, I'll probably do another what I eat in a day just so you can see how it's different from what I had been doing before. Again, it's not that different. It's mostly just that I cut out the um, the sweet treats. But I plan to replace them with, like, better sweet treats. That's that's my point. Um, so that's where I am this week. How are you? I hope everybody is doing uh, really well. Uh, not this weekend, but next weekend is that uh, costume Friday the 13th bachelorette party thing that I'm going to in New Orleans. i um, flying home on Wednesday, so when I come to you next Thursday, I will be coming to you from New Orleans. And, uh hopefully with a loss. That is my plan. I am like, like I said, I'm reinvigorated. I'm re-energized. I feel really good about this. Like I feel good that like my mind and my body are connected, (laughs) which might sound like duh, but sometimes it's hard to, to get them to align. And I feel like right now I'm aligned and I'm going to take advantage of that. So I hope you all have a great weekend and thanks for watching and I will talk with you soon. Bye.